right, I'm uh, I'm back. I've just been to the gym. I've got back. Uh, you know, I can't really half ass it. That's basically besides the point. So we are going to. Um, we are going to make this a decent CL program, right, with with comments. Correctly displays a row on. A row is a list of elements taken from board. Display the board using display row. Checks if every element in row is string equal to player. Checks if a row is full. Maybe we should actually change it to this, so that uh, that's the uh, the percentage sign normally indicates that something is uh, for internal use. Oh. But it's you know you do you do it on class slots, but it's just a convention. It's not uh, you don't you don't have to do it. Oh. Collect all the vertical rows in board. Also, as you can see, I'm capitalizing variables. This is to indicate that they are, in fact, the supplied variables. Um, so you want to tell them that you are talking about them. Checks if pos is already taken on board. Uh, validate you. Right, we're going to change this. So, we're going to change this. And this is quite a... Oh. So, I'm pouring, I'm drinking my hot chocolate. Uh. Now, this is where I, uh, I was I did, not really a fan of the way I did this. Because all we got was error in input. But... In reality, we know the three, we have the three potential problems. So you have, uh, they've input something like a letter instead of, you know, uh, a, an X, Y coordinate. Uh, they've entered more than uh, two. Uh, there's actually another one too, which we didn't deal with. The fact that uh, they could have done that. Oh, actually, no, we used a mint holes, didn't we? But... Um, Yes, okay, scratch that. But uh, also that the past integers are above the uh, allowed x, y coordinates. So really what we actually need is conditions. So what we're going to do is define a new condition. Define condition, tick, -tac. I'm just going to call it tick, tac, tick, tac condition. This is just going to be our top level condition for this um, can define condition. Ooh. Define condition bad. So, what have we got? We've got three potential failures, uh, not integers. Tick tack condition uh, input. Uh, so accessor input init arg input type uh, it's going to be a string documentation the input provided which is not that is oh that's not a not possible wonder what have I probably not even a bloody word. That cannot be passed into an integer. Message 
access a message in it org message type string documentation a message oh you know what actually is a better idea i'll show you a message condition well we're uh if you're new to C oh if you're new to cl probably have <coughs> absolutely no idea what i'm doing and what i am doing is defining what is a class of subtype condition and this here is like a slot it's a, it's a a piece of information stored within the class uh, documentation top level tic tac toe condition uh, so we don't need that we'll have that inherit it inherit from all the others uh, now what we're going to do we're going to use the report key no documentation signaled when input provided is not not integers now we're going to use the report function now this is a function it takes two arguments the uh, condition itself and the stream and I'm not explaining what a stream is but uh, you then output what you want to be displayed to the user uh, in the case that this is unhandled uh, so we're going to do format stream uh, input provided is not uh, not integers and we can do input and then message Ooh. and then we do input uh, obj and message obj now I'll, sh I'll demonstrate this error uh, not integers and uh, input will be, I don't know, whatever. And then message. I'm a message. Input provided are not integers. Input, see, condition of type, not integers. Um, I'm just going to quickly pause while I... Uh, I'll just quickly pause and come back when I have actually produced the other two, because we've got two other conditions. So I'm just going to pause this video. Right, so I'm back and I'm going to show you what I've done. So, uh, commonest has multiple inheritance. And what I've done here is I made the original conditions, the top level condition that contains one slot called message. I've then created a new condition that, um, this new condition is our top level user input failure condition and it uh, has one slot called input which is provided uh, which is the input that the user has provided and then you have the not integers so they have provided information that's not integers dog you have um, when they're uh, they've provided more than two coordinates when they have what do you want dog sorry my dog Right, sorry about that. Uh, let's go sort my dog out. Oh, I was like, yeah, so we have a condition that's of the subclass user input condition for every single, uh, for each of the various, well, that we've claimed problems that the uh, user, or errors the user can make in input. So now we just have to modify uh, validate user input to check for these so first we will have pol uh, no it's right which you set if it doesn't matter so we will set f pause to the value of passing and in the case that this fails with simple we'll just catch condition um, here we know that in this case it's failed on this oops 
sort the rest of out in a sec. Um, so we know if it fails, it's failing on pass integer. So what we're going to do is we are going to grab the condition that's passed. No, we're not. We're going to make a new condition. We're going to error uh, with what we're going to error with. We are going to error with what was the not integers not integers the argument the input is pause message is uh, position received uh, not ints. okay so that's the first one get rid of that so that is uh, not integers now now we have when not oh I hit the insert on my keyboard when not equal oh I re hit the insert on my keyboard length oops length pos two then we want to error uh, what did I call it oversized input where is it Uh, input pause message input oversized. Uh, this only works after pause has been passed, which is important. Uh, now, what have we got? So now we have destructure pause. So unless these, oh, unless and then we will error. Oh, that's a real problem. Well, I'll show you in a second how we deal with that. Um, error uh, out of bounds input. out of bounds now we need to make an exception here and condition not uh, what did we call it user input condition so that should mean it will let any condition passed that is it'll let any condition passed that is of type condition, uh, that is not a user input condition. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's, well, we'll find out if that works. Validate user input uh, A1. Input provided are not integers. Okay, if we do one, 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 uh, they are integers that did pass. Uh, Oversized input. Maybe this has not worked. And condition. If we do C, we just print C. We'll find out, won't we? Arg count error. SB kernel arg count errors. Does not equal length two. We'll just change that to unless we'll do this. Um, how about we just make this more explicit? We'll just grab the condition and we'll just resignal it like that. Now let's see if that works. More than two chords provided. Okay, well, that worked. Um, out of bounds. Now there's one last one which is place taken P if we put that right at the end. Um, place taken P bought, uh, 
that doesn't work because we don't provide the board. Uh, let's just provide the board as an item again. Place token P uh, unless oh when pause an error place. Do I call it place taken? I probably do. Just call it spot taken. Error spot taken input pause message spot already taken. Okay, I'm not going to test that one. Don't want to test that one. Um, so what I will do now is I will first and foremost, ah, we also want in the case that nothing goes wrong, we just want to return pause. Um, what we are going to do is make a method def, uh, we're going to make a generic def generic handle um, user condition. It's going to take a condition as an argument. Documentation handles the condition sent. Or oh. validating user input. And so we have validate user input, which is going to. Handle a, let's handle a case again. We don't need any of this anymore. We just return IP. We don't need any of this because we're handling it all. Now we do handle user condition. Oh, we do. Ooh, what am I doing? User input condition C and handle you. So, ah, probably want to take the player as well and the board just because we can. It's just, I know that's broken, but don't worry. What? Whatever. That doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Um, Okay, so let's fix that. Handle user board player in the condition. Get rid of that. Cool with one. Yeah, you know, I have to provide the board now, don't I? Um, oh, oops. Def method uh, handle user condition. Uh, should we do an around method? No, we won't. We'll just do a normal board player condition. In this case, let's start with, well, I'll do one and then I'll pause. I'll do one, I'll pause, and then uh, I'll show you the output at the end. So what have we got? We'll start with oversized inputs. Okay, uh, format T, your input is, is bigger than it should be. Try again. And now I'll just quickly pause and when I'm done, I'll show you. Right, and we're back. Uh, so what I've done here so I've created a method for each of our uh, input types. Should be noted that uh, undersized is also a possibility, but uh, you get the gist. You could just change oversized to uh, some some like size uh, error or something. Um, and uh, in each case, we format we create a different format string for when uh, for when there is a uh, for each different condition. And now here's the kind of important part is so we haven't changed I haven't changed any of play, but I have changed get user input. So previously I showed you here handler case. Now this handler case 
is effectively just like a try and catch statement. So we're trying these various, uh, we're trying all these various things, and if they fail, we're going to signal our own error. Um, but you know, you 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 do a handler case, so it's like a handler case. We're going to signal our own error, help, and we're going to catch the error, and we're going to print the error. See, so it's just try and case. Now, the thing is, what's important here is handler bind is different. So what handler bind is doing here is it's checking for a condition of this type, user input condition, which is what gets signaled by every single one of these is of type, of a, is a subclass of, uh, of user input condition. And what it's doing is it's grabbing, here's the condition that comes with, here's, so we're using a function, an anonymous function to handle it. And in it, it takes one argument, and that's the condition, C. And now we're gonna execute the, uh, we're gonna execute the method we call, created here, the generic function, with the current board, the current player, and the condition. All right, so the error object we're using is now being passed as an argument to this. And once it's uh, formatted its output correctly, it's then going to do what's called invoking a restart. Now why this is different is because, so it's basically it has here a condition's been signaled, but we have a restart here. Because we have a restart, the stack won't unwind at this point. It will just go back uh, it will just keep looking back until it finds or potentially finds a, uh, a handler for that condition type and then does what this handler tells it to. And in this case, we're going to invoke the uh, restart retry and the restart retry just recalls the function just like before. Um, and so to show you that, oh, I didn't recompile that. Let me show you that in action. So it's oversized. It's, uh, I don't know how to get it. Which one is it? Um, it's bigger than it should be. Oh no, that is correct. Um, 10, one puts out of bounds. Um, so if we get a valid one, now if we do one, one again, position one, one is already taken. Uh, one, a contains non-integers, etc. Did I, I think so? I think I demonstrated all of them. But as you can see, we are using generic functions, and we're dispatching on condition objects. And the condition objects are uh, just basically normal objects that are manipulatable, just with the default. Uh, well, we class of the object system. So I think you know we've we've managed to successfully turn our uh, short and reasonable tic tac toe game into a casual two hundred line uh, common list program, and uh, I also didn't provide the doc strings, but uh, you know here I would probably write uh, validates the user input given board and position, and then I would say I would write in what conditions it signals what conditions. Uh, you know, this one's easy, flips player to the opposite, x becomes o, o becomes x, etc. You know, you get the point, and I would also say what a tic-tac-toe is doing. Um, now, one very final thing, I didn't explain what is happening here. So this, oh, no, what is happening here? Let me just kill this. So if I show you this, so this one, format T1, uh, just formats, it's, uh, you know, if you put ABC, format like that, get the point. Now if I do this, what do you think is gonna happen? Well, it's going to print what's inside of the list. If I do this, we have that. If I do this, however, it 
doesn't print, it basically escapes the printing of this if it's the last element in the list. Now this is where it gets fun, is this here is a conditional. So format T, put the condition, let's get rid of, rubbish, get rid of that. We'll just put fail and we'll put pass. I think that should work and we'll do T and nil. So you see what's happening because uh, our board is full of nil, nil, nils, right? So what it's doing is it's going through, checking the elements here, and if it's nil, it prints a space. Otherwise, it does this little thing here, which refers to the previous element or the previous format argument, something like that. I think it's the previous element, and then uh, prints it. So, and then you know, we conditionally print the bar. So, I hope you find that it's probably going to be a really long video, but uh, that uh, I do hope someone finds it. Uh, useful and not a total brain fart so yeah well i guess thanks for watching